Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. Recently I went down a bit of an inquisitorial rabbit hole looking at out of production Inquisitor models on eBay. And I thought I might as well research every single Inquisitor model Games Workshop has ever made. There can't possibly be that many of them, right? Wrong! There are 28, yep, 28 Inquisitors. Most of these minis came out in Rogue Trader, then a bunch around 3rd edition 40k, and then a trickling of modern plastics until we get to today, 2022. So let's go through every single Inquisitor ever made. The first ever Inquisitor model made by Games Workshop was Inquisitor with Laz Gun 1. And it is it has been named by the fans Inquisitor Obi-Wan Sherlock Clouseau. And you know, this model doesn't actually look terrible. It doesn't look like an Inquisitor. If anything, it looks a little bit like Captain Jean-Luc Picard in that episode where he spends a lifetime with those aliens and learns to play the flute, and then at the end of it, he gets to keep the flute. But I, it's not a bad mini. It's got a bolt pistol, or maybe a bolt gun, and then he's carrying the weirdest, longest Laz pistol in the whole world. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not good, but it's not bad. But speaking of bad, let's look at the second Inquisitor model ever made. Boy! Inquisitor Augustus. This guy looks like a piece of chewed gum. Holy moly. It's rough. Why his legs? Why are his legs like that? Like, it looks like he's just got wobbly, weak knees. And then I don't know what's going on with his chest. It seems like they just they just left it unsculpted and it's like pitted and there's weird texture. I don't know what's going on in the face. The helmet's really bizarre. I mean, this must have been before Space Marines and Power Armor really had been fully solidified. Yeah, I don't, for some reason, I don't see a lot of Inquisitor Augustus minis floating out there. Whew. It's, it's rough. I have, I have some Rogue Trader models that have shoulder pads a little bit like that, but boy, this has got to be one of the lowest tier models Games Workshop has ever made. And then moving on to the next four Inquisitors, because these were kind of all made together. The Ordo Malleus Inquisitors with demon weapons, although I believe they were advertised as Inquisitors with power weapons. But they are in fact demon weapons. They're using the powers of the warp against the warp itself. Um, I had never ever seen any of these guys, and I'm, I would assume you guys have never seen any of these models, because boy, do they not look like 40k models anymore. Um, the one guy, the one guy with Space marine shoulder pads, he almost looks like a 40k model. He doesn't look almost good. He looks almost like a 40k model. The other three, I, I don't even know. I kind of like the guy with his arms up. He's just, he's clearly just having a good time. But I, I wouldn't be completely opposed because there's some interesting stuff here and there. I like the giant shoulder pads with like the symbols on them. I think that that's something that could come back on a modern Inquisitor. Uh, demon weapons would be a really interesting thing to see come back. Um, maybe that's all that needs to come back. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Good old, good old this period of Games Workshop. <laughs> yeah, that was the next four Inquisitor models, which were all kind of the same model. Games Workshop used to do this. They didn't make, they didn't make a lot of different models, but they made a lot of the models they had. So if they, if they made an Inquisitor, an Ordo Malleus Inquisitor, they would make four. So that, I guess for variety, so that, so that people could get a model that like they felt would, they would feel really represented them because Rogue Trader was a little bit more of a role playing game than a, than a rank and flank war game. But yeah, bizarre. <laughs> And then next we have some more Inquisitors in power armor. And these guys, I don't want to say they're bad. They're not that bad. They're not at nearly as bad as the last ones we've looked at. These guys are fine. Um, wow. The one of them is very Gears of Warsy, especially with like the big like nipple pads. That is, that is straight up Gears of War. These guys are fine. They're not, they don't look very 40K. They don't really even look that Games Workshop-y, but these guys are like super, 
power armor soldier dudes. They've got helmets, they've got fun looking armor. They ha almost have proportions that match something that has once existed on the planet Earth. I, I don't hate these guys. I almost want the one with the bear head and the laurel wreath. I feel like there's something you could do with that model. Maybe instead of making him an Inquisitor, I'll have him be like a member of the Inquisitorial retinue carrying like a plasma gun. Cause that giant gun he's got kind of looks maybe a little bit like a plasma gun. I think, I think these models are maybe, you know, of course, obviously, um, Sherlock, uh, Obi-Wan Sherlock Clouseau is a real Inquisitor. And I think these, these are the next real Inquisitor models. And then moving on to some good old proper real Inquisitor models, Inquisitors in Terminator armor. I think these guys are fine. Uh, I actually own one of these guys, the guy with the robot leg and bare head. Um, I don't actually have those arms though. I actually have other metal arms from the time period, but these guys are fine. They're okay. They, they look like real normal, honest to God, 40K power armor or 40K Terminator armor and they have appropriate weapons, they're standing on a real base. These guys, these guys are actual Inquisitors that you could plunk down on the table and call Inquisitors in Terminator armor. But after that, we move on to the Demon Hunter Inquisitors 1, 2, and 3. And it, I, this is a big trend with Inqui the Inquisition for some reason. I, I can't really find as many examples of it in other factions, but Games Workshop would sculpt something and then slightly alter that sculpt into other loadouts for that particular unit. It might be because Inquisitors have such an incredible war gear list. Like literally Inquisitors have, I think like 100 unique pieces of war gear. And some of that is like retinue war gear and vehicle war gear, but still there's probably like almost 50 unique loadouts that you can put on an Inquisitor. And so Games Workshop's like, well, we gotta do at least three. But these guys, these guys are all right. I don't mind them at all. Uh, I like the ones with the bolter, with the bolter and the thing. They don't super jingle my jangles. They don't flim my flams, but you can tell those are inquisitors. And those are inquisitors in power armor. I kind of like though that the power armor doesn't seem to extend to the arms. So they're just, they're just, you know, they just, they just, they never ever skip arm day. Their arms, they don't even need the power enhancements. They are, completely capable on their own. Wow, and the one with the inquisitorial eye symbol kind of behind his hood, that, it, I feel like I could have sculpted that. <laughs> it looks a little, it looks a little rough around the edges. But these guys are fine. Um, Games Workshop actually still sells the worst one. They sell on the Games Workshop web store the Power Sword and Combi Melta. Um, which I don't actually think looks nearly as good as the other two who just have a bolter, but maybe, maybe they kept it around. Either they kept it around because that's the only mold that hasn't broken yet, or that's a, a one particular loadout that they don't have a, another model that would easily count as that. Although, I mean, a Space Marine is basically just an Inquisitor in power armor, so. But yeah, these Demon Hunter Inquisitors are all right. I like them. And then moving on to the Inquisitor with Inferno Pistol and Power Sword and the Inquisitor I'm calling Cowboy Inquisitor with Bionic Arm and Plasma Pistol. These also are the same exact model, but boy oh boy, did they change almost everything. It's kind of bizarre how different these models are, even though they're the exact same figure. Like the, the jackets are different, the legs are different, the, obviously the weapons are different, the hat has been shortened and changed a little bit. One of them is wearing like some like breastplate armor and another one is wearing like a shirt. Like they really put a lot of effort into turning one sculpt into two models. I almost wonder why they didn't just make two models. Because the only thing that they kept was the pose and the, I guess the, the, flailing of the, the the long duster coat. It is pretty bizarre. And unfortunately, Games Workshop, uh, st the Games Workshop does still sell the Inquisitor with Inferno pistol and power sword, which is a cool model, but I kinda, I almost like the Cowboy Inquisitor more. I don't know, he's just kinda sick with the, with the mask pulled up over his face and then his giant weird, like, oversized plasma pistol. 
It's, I just I just like that model a lot, especially and the robot arm. The robot arm is very unique too. I like that model a lot, and uh, yeah, they don't they don't make it anymore. But they've decided that they they can't possibly let Inquisitor with Inferno Pistol and Power Sword leave the Games Workshop web store. That model you can buy that today. Ah, uh, it doesn't make any sense, and it doesn't make any sense at all. But I kind of love it. These models are really cool. I think these might be some of my favorite Inquisitor models. I think it's it's all about the Pilgrim hat. The Pilgrim hat makes it. It puts it puts it into this weird, this weird like time period that Games Workshop exists in, where it's like a little bit Victorian. It's a little bit medieval. It's a little bit I don't know early Renaissance. It's it's a, that's the sort of aesthetic that I really really dig, and I love when Games Workshop actually does it. And so I like these models a lot. These are these are these are some uh, some peak quality Inquisitors. Next up, we have some Witch Hunters, and these ones are a lot more blatant that Games Workshop reused the same sculpt, because literally, arm swaps. These models are nothing but arm swaps. They didn't do anything to the actual bodies. They did almost nothing to the heads, except one of them has a robot eye, and I hope. The reason it has a robot eye is because at some point they damaged the master model. And they're like, oh god, what are we gonna do? Okay, just uh, robot eye. We're gonna do robot eye. But uh, these models, none of them are available from Games Workshop anymore. Um, they pop up. They popped up made to order a few years back. But other than that, you can't buy them. Um, which is too bad. These are old models from 2003, and they're not bad. They are not bad models at all. Uh, they're good Inquisitors. They're good Witch Hunters. Just uh, overall good models. I mean, boy, compare this to some of the earlier entries we've seen on this list. These are Inquisitors. And the next Inquisitor is the Eons of Battle Patreon. That's right, over there we have lots of high quality terrain and miniature STLs hosted on comics, games, and things, viewer critique videos, a weekly hobby hangout live stream, and more. It's the best way to support us making videos, so head on over to Patreon to get access to even more Eons of Battle. And we also have merch linked in the description below. Now let's get back to the Inquisition. And now, now that we're getting to the more modern stuff, now we're getting to the real <laughs> miniatures. Inquisitor Cotiez. This guy is probably who most people think of as the Inquisitor model from Games Workshop. It looks spiffy. It looks really good. The paint job is pretty good. The double-headed bald eagle is iconic. I Everything about this model is just pretty darn good. I really like it. Uh, a head swap is the easiest thing in the world, and I've seen people do tons of head swaps to make their own unique Inquisitor. Inquisitor Cotiez is very, very good. Just a good, solid Inquisitor. And now moving on to probably the, the biggest, most eye-catching Inquisitor model of all time, Fyodor Karamazov. Damn, I really want this model. This guy is walking around on a dreadnought chair. <laughs> he has a servitor with a triple barreled multi melta and just some little fella who has an extra long finger just for pointing at text. It's, it's a great, it's a brilliant model. I mean, this model is just dripping with incredible details. One detail I really love is the feet of his dreadnought power chair are Inquisitor symbols. The little Inquisitor eye is the shape of the foot. Which you'd almost figure is a little bit sacrilegious. I mean, I guess it's not the symbol, it's the symbol of their profession, not the symbol of like their religion. But it just is funny that literally the feet are an Inquisitor symbol. This model is wonderful. I love this model. It's too bad I didn't pick it up when it was metal because I have some other metal dreadnoughts and boy, Boy, do they really feel like something in the hand. Like you could chuck that and have it go right through the drywall. I bet, I bet if I whipped, if whipped one of those hard enough and I hit right between a stud, I could get through both sides. I bet I could. <laughs> but yeah, Fyodor Karamazov, a really great model. This guy really shows off what the Inquisition is all about, which is kind of People who love themselves too much and are completely, completely uh, at the mercy of their own lust for power because Inquisitors have been given complete authority to do anything they want. And, you know, I guess except for Eisenhorn, uh, it seems like they've all decided to do terrible bad things with their power. Oh, and we'll get to Eisenhorn. 
But next up, we go over to Forge World with Inquisitor Lord Hector Rex. And this model's good. It's probably, this model is much better than the previous, like, second edition Warhammer um, uh, Inquisitors and Terminator armor that we saw. Those guys, they're a little bit charming because of their age, but this guy is a proper Inquisitor in Terminator armor. He looks really good. Every, every, he's got some really, really good details. His armor, probably something closer to Artificer armor than strict Terminator armor, is is decorated properly, and it looks it looks like he would be. This would be a suit of armor made for the Inquisition. And then the sword and shield is very classy. This is just a overall really, really good model. Um, he's a little pricey because he actually comes with a retinue. Although the retinue might be worth it because you you do need like those weird extra models to go with your Inquisitor. And so it's probably not a bad thing to get those, but yeah, overall just a really, really solid model. And also from Forge World, Inquisitor Solomon Locke and Retinue. This guy, this might be my overall favorite Inquisitor model. I just really, really like it. I just love his hood, the details of the text that are on the trim of his cloak, the fact that he has a hood pulled up over his face because really, I mean, Inquisitors are, we all, you know, represented on this list is Inquisitors who are wearing their absolute, their Sunday best. Like this is what they wear when they are gonna take care of business. But a lot of what Inquisitors do is they're kind of like spies. They're kind of sneaking around, trying to get places, find out what people are up to. And they're often very covert. And so that is a little bit what I see here is like, this, this is a halfway between an Inquisitor wearing, you know, dressed to the nines and kind of sneaking around, skulking in the shadows. And I really, I really dig this model. Also, I feel like Games Workshop never really does hoods very well. That's a really good hood. I think a lot of the times hoods are terrible because they're on Space Marines. And so you've, the, the hood is like part of the head and is like tucked into the Space Marine neck hole. It makes for a really weird shape, but this is a really good, really good mini. And really, if you just kind of scraped, scrapped, scraped out the eye on his shoulder pad, this could totally be like a covert inquisitor. And then moving on from Forge World, we have Gregor Eisenhorn, or as I like to call him, Greg. He's fine. The model is very nice. It looks like the guy from the cover of the book. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Eisenhorn. The first novel is not bad. The second and third are, I don't know, I had trouble getting into them. I feel like Eisenhorn just kind of becomes a bad guy and I don't care if he succeeds or not. But the model is good. It has really, really nice details. I think it is a resin model, but some of the one weird thing I noticed is Eisenhorn must be like a really chilly, cold-blooded person who always wants to warm up because he's wearing some sort of a cloak. You can see it poking out near his feet, a white cloak. And then on top of his white cloak, he's wearing a black like leather coat. And then on top of his black leather coat, he's wearing like a black cloak cape thing. So he is really, really layered up. And then he's also got like some blue jeans under there, some Levi's. This, I don't quite get this model. It's fine. I also don't love the pose. He maybe should have been pointing with the gun or pointing with the stick, baton. Yeah, this is a perfectly fine Inquisitor model. Also, you could totally rip his head off and replace it with something else and turn him into a different Inquisitor. But there's no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a good model. Then moving on to Inquisitor Katarina Gray Fox. And this model I go back and forth on because I really like it, but I also feel like it's wrong. I think it might just be down to the posing. Like they made, they invented some really cool looking armor and then, you know, they invented this really, really cool armor. And then the model is just standing there. And then they just, they just bent the arm a little. And they're like, all right, we're done. Because she's just standing. She's just standing perfectly straight with her arm at her side and her other arm basically at her side. They like have her, have her marching forward, have her shooting her, her master crafted stake launcher bolt gun, maybe have the sword in the other hands. I don't know. I think I think it's it's a model that's kind of let down in posing a little bit. Um, I almost bought this model, but the eBay seller I purchased from sent me the wrong model. Um, they sent me a cipher, and so I ended up sending it back, and I never ended up with the model. But 
I think one day maybe I will pick up this model and I'll try to repose it into something a little bit more interesting. But I don't want to be down on it. I don't mind this model. It's a little bit of a departure from the design aesthetic that we've seen before. Um, but it's still kind of cool. And I like the pilgrim hat. I'm a sucker for inquisitors with pilgrim hats. I really like pilgrim hats. But you know what? Uh, if, if, uh, you know, if this model was not really the female inquisitor in power armor I wanted, the next model is the Ordo Xenos Lord Inquisitor Kyria Draxus. And this model I love. This model's great. That looks like power armor. That looks like a power fist. I love the, um, the Eldar Shuriken Catapults. <laughs> the Shuriken Catapult with a purity steel a seal stuck on the side of it. So yeah, that makes it kosher. Now we're good to go. <laughs> Alien weapon, just, you know, you stick a purity seal on there, you're good to, you're ready to rock. And her little dragon friend. Who doesn't want a little dragon friend? This is a great model. Clearly, I mean, she is a Ordos Xenos Lord Inquisitor. So she's a big deal. And boy, I bet her peers would call her a bit of a radical because that's a lot of alien swag she's got on her. She almost has like a little orc tooth on her ear <laughs> just to just to continue the motif of uh, maybe maybe she's not a, a a super super by the books inquisitor. But I think she looks great. It's a really really cool model and I've seen some really cool head swaps. People maybe getting rid of the dragon and replacing that with something else, but this model works really nicely. And I think that is really good looking human power armor. Like that looks like a suit of power armor that a space marine isn't wearing. It looks like a human being's power armor. And finally, we come to the newest Inquisitor model, the 2022 Warhammer Store Anniversary Inquisitor. It's a limited edition, and I think it looks very, very good. Um, it kind of goes back to Sol uh, Solomon Locke. He's he's all he's all cloaked up, uh, but you can see there's there's some I don't know if that's like a really really nice, uh, really really nice plate armor underneath or if that is power armor. It's probably not power armor. I like that he's got a robot hand. I like that he's got one normal hand. I like his his head poking through. I like that on the inquisitorial eye that's on his backpack. They have like taped a skull to it where the normal skull would, the normal sculpted skull would go. It's kind of a nice little detail. And I like that he is stabbing a sword that says Exterminatus. He is stabbing it into a demon book and the demon book is screaming a little because it's getting hurt. There's a little face in the flame that's like, ah, that's, that's a really, really fun detail. This is what, this is what um, inquisitors do often is they'll track down like evil or demonic or possessed artifacts and then destroy them. And yeah, this is a great model. Um, it's too bad it's limited because this would be a great generic Inquisitor. The only problem is he's very specifically posed, so it would be a little tricky to turn this guy into a different Inquisitor. Um, I guess maybe an arm swap. We'll have to see how much of his torso was sacrificed so that his arms could be kind of tucked together like this. Um, I'll probably try to get this model, unless I've already missed it, then I won't try to get it. Uh, I also, I don't know how much I love his purity seals flapping up. Presumably there's being energy cast off by stabbing this demon book. And that is what has pushed the uh, purity seals up into that shape. But it looks a tiny bit awkward. I'd probably maybe try to tilt those back to a uh, to hanging downwards. But overall, I really like this model a lot. This is definitely one of the well, up there with some of the best Inquisitors Games Workshop has ever made. And that was every single Inquisitor mini ever made. My favorites were Inquisitor Solomon Locke and Inquisitor Kyria Draxus. I still don't really like Eisenhorn, but leave a comment below what were your favorite Inquisitors. Thanks for watching.